Hey friends, Noah from Corporate Streams. Today we're gonna be talking about bonded internet. Be seen, heard, and better understood through virtual gatherings. Elevate your message with Corporate Streams. So this may have been something you've heard about before. It definitely was for me. And for the past few days, I've been learning all about bonded internet, the different options that we have out there. And I did wanna start off this video with kind of a disclaimer that I am still learning about all of this stuff. I am not an expert in IT. And I know a lot of viewers that watch my channel are. So if I say something incorrectly, or if you wanna help clarify one of the things that I said, please give us a comment. And I'm gonna go ahead and pin a few of the best comments there in case I get something wrong. Corporate streams does exactly that. We go into corporate companies, we do live streaming. Sometimes the internet at these venues is not very good. Sometimes there are firewalls or other issues that might prevent us from being able to stream out. And just like with most other tech things, sometimes the internet fails. And so depending on the situation and the company, the building we're in, the internet we have, sometimes there, there might be a problem with the internet. And so a bonded internet solution might be something that helps us out. And that's why I'm excited to talk about that and dive into that today. We need around five megabits per second of of upload speed when we are live streaming, especially if we have two different systems. I know for most corporate live streams, I have a primary and a backup machine going through Wirecast. And so whatever my encoders or computers are set to, say it's 2,500 kilobytes per second, I'm gonna double that so that I have some headroom above that number. Plus if I'm running two encoders, that, re that really means I need like 10 megabits per second of upload speed. We need it to be super reliable. Ideally, we would have some sort of fail safe solution in case one of the internet lines stops working, we could rely on the rest of the internet providers to make that happen. So in my research, there are three ways to accomplish this. The first is software bonding, where you take a program like Speedify and combined multiple internet sources into one. An RTMP encoder, which basically takes your video signal, breaks it into packets, which gets sent up, but it has to follow that RTMP protocol. And then the last solution is a bonded internet service, which would allow you to surf the web, watch videos, or do anything that you would on a traditional internet line, yet it has multiple services bonded into one. So you can use traditional cable internet, you can use a cell service or multiple cell services and combine that into one internet line that is a lot more stable than having one of the previous mentioned choices. Another really interesting thing I found in my research is there is a wide range of price points. There are some consumer products out there like hotspots that allow for a single cellular connection, but these tend to fail and when you're relying on cell service, it can be spotty. The other side of that is the military grade or the professional grade stuff, which is designed to not fail. This definitely has some huge perks to it, but it also comes at a much higher price. One of the things that I didn't like about software bonding is it's software. Unfortunately, that tends to fail sometimes. And in my experience as a live stream professional, the number one thing that fails on me has been software, whether that's Wirecast, OBS or another software program. Sometimes there's issues or glitches that can easily be the fail point in the system. It's not to say that hardware will never fail. It's just less likely to fail versus software in my experience. So when you can rely on a hardware device over software, that would definitely be my choice. The same thing goes for video switchers. If you have the ability to have a hardware switcher versus a software based switcher, nine times out of 10, I would choose the hardware switcher. So ultimately I need that reliability. I would rather spend the money to get something that is reliable, that works for my clients and is rock solid. So here are a few things that I'm looking for when I was looking for these services. Number one, I need true internet bonding. I can't just rely on a single source of internet when I go into a venue, something might fail, which it has in the past. And I was actually on a gig this week where the house internet at a museum failed on us. And so we needed a backup solution. I spent almost a thousand dollars on an internet solution just for this one shoot. So bonded internet is the first thing on my checklist. Number two, I'm using both Zoom and RTMP sometimes for my live streams. So unfortunately I cannot use just the RTMP encoders that are out there. I need something that is a true bonded internet option. So that puts me in the third category, like I mentioned. And going back to the gig that happened this week. So this is the device I ended up renting for the gig. It's called a Peplink Max HD4. It can take four different cellular signals and bond them into one. It actually has eight different SIM cards. So I can use four SIM cards as the primary and four as the backup or fail safe options. It can take two ethernet connections into 
a WAN and combine those as well. Plus it has a USB slot for a modem as well. So that means there's over seven internet connections that can be fed into this box and it will combine all of those into one bonded service. Now this device was originally designed for firefighters and for EMT type work and it is one of those military grade kind of deals. Super powerful, super strong. It could be hardwired into something. So if it's on a bus or a fire truck, they can basically wire it into their system. It's got an eight port switch as well built into the box. If you check out their website, you can see there are several photos of the device being used on set as well, which is super cool. And then of course it has its different ports that are labeled. So there are different types of port connections here. I'm gonna go ahead and size this up so it's a little bit easier for everybody to see. The first thing on the front are these two Wi-Fi antennas. So this can broadcast this out so your devices can connect to it wirelessly, right? You create its own network and your devices can connect to it. It has the two WAN ports, right? Your ethernet cables that you can plug stuff into. And then you have the eight ethernet LAN ports. So these would go out to your different devices or computers that you need to use. You have a USB WAN interface, right? Which allows you to connect internet as well. And then you have a second antenna for the Wi-Fi. So it has a diversity antenna, which means if one of them fails for whatever reason, it will jump back to the second one. So it's using an SMA connector, right? And so there are eight different antennas. So these antennas function as a diversity pair, which means if one of them fails, it'll bump to the second one. And so it does that in real time and kind of bounces between the two. So that pair of antennas is per slot. And again, there's four, so that makes eight antennas total for this particular device. As mentioned, you can you can plug in this to a DC terminal block or there is a AC power adapter as well. So you can plug that in. Now this device is not cheap. It runs about $6,000. And again, my rental with the data that I used was close to $1,000. So after doing some research, I was super impressed by this device. It worked really well for us. Yes, it is very expensive. And there are many other devices that try to beat this price point, but they're not as industrial or heavy duty as this one and I was very impressed by this box. So in my research, I found that there is a Max HD2 and that's what I ended up getting. So the Max HD2 is similar to the four, except it does two bands of 4G LTE instead of four. You can do up to four different LAN ports in the front. You can still do the two different ethernet, one USB and it can do Wi-Fi as well. But then again, if you look at the back, it cuts everything basically in half, right? So you'll have four antennas for two different SIM cards. It doesn't have the backup SIM cards built in, but that's okay in my scenario, because what I plan to do is use the house internet as the primary through WAN, then have two SIM cards as backup. So that's a total of three sources. And then on top of that, I'm also gonna get a USB modem. So that makes four different internet sources. Just in case something fails, I have that redundancy. I have the backup and it's all safe. Now this device new is $4,000. You can actually look for it used and you'll notice that the price of the used model is a lot, lot less. I've actually found these on eBay between $600 and $1,000, depending on who you purchase this from. Just know that most of the time when they're being sold on eBay like this, they are outside of warranty. And so if something breaks down, it's probably gonna cost more than what you've paid for it to get repaired. I did look into the one year warranty that could be extended on these devices and that is $650 for that extended warranty. For me, I am not gonna extend that. I did end up buying two of these devices. That way I have one as a primary and the second as a backup in case something goes wrong. But that's currently what I chose in doing my research. Now, obviously you have to pay for the device itself, which is an expense of its own. And then after that, you have to pay for the data. So you can pay for SIM cards, you can usually get these unlimited plans from the different cell phone providers. You're gonna be using a lot more data than a traditional cell phone user would. T-Mobile, AT&T, Sprint, they all offer these unlimited data plans. So we probably all already know this, but eventually you'll get throttled the more data that you use, which means they slow down your speeds. So this can drastically affect your stream. Obviously, if you're doing video streams and your internet gets slowed down, by that much, it could really be a showstopper. So there's a few things that you can try to do to help prevent that. Number one, you can call the data provider and try to talk to somebody like a manager, somebody who's higher up, explain to them that, hey, I need truly unlimited data. This is not a cell phone that's using data. It's gonna be part of my business. And so you might have to pay a little extra or a separate plan to really make that an unlimited feature. I would highly encourage you to use different providers and understand there are different towers for both T-Mobile and Sprint versus AT&T and Verizon. 
So those are two different tower systems. They use two slightly different technologies to provide internet service to you. So I would encourage you to try to use both of them. So use different SIM cards so that you can use each. So even though these high gain antennas will really boost the signal and help connect you to those cell towers, you still need to be within some sort of range of those towers. This bonded internet system simply doesn't create internet out of nowhere. We'll talk about a satellite internet company here in a minute, but when you're using SIM cards, they're based on an LTE technology, which still uses cell towers to connect to them. This ultimately means when you're in a remote place like a desert or in the ocean, there may not be proper coverage by those LTE towers to reach you in these remote spots. Now, there are some tools out there, some internet tools where you can look up the address that you're shooting at to see what the coverage will be and the strength of those towers. Another thing to note is if you're at a concert or a larger venue where you have hundreds if not thousands of people using their cell phones, those can quickly clog up those cell phone towers. And so that's not really gonna help you in those situations where you absolutely need internet because those towers will get locked up. So some of these bonded internet services and devices allow you to go in and select certain ports certain towers, what have you. So if you're able to set those settings up, research that, do a little bit of that homework so that you can be prepared for success. There are options where certain manufacturers offer internet that you could pay for through them. So they have deals with cellular companies. So you pay for that data per gigabyte. So that might be something to check out. I know Teradek has a setup with that in their lineup. For the device that I purchased, I'm gonna have to get SIM cards that supply their own internet. And these will probably range between 50 and $70 a month per card. So this is not really a cheap solution, but this is something that gives you that reliability that we all need. So what is the major difference between a bonded internet solution and say the hotspot on your phone or one of those hotspot devices that is sold? Well, number one, with bonded internet, you have multiple sources of internet that are combined into one. So you can have multiple cellular providers that get combined into one. You could also connect to the house's internet, whether that's cable or fiber, so you can combine that as well. And then the most important thing to me is the antenna set. With your phone, it has to be compact right? This isn't the 80s anymore. We can't have a phone where we pull out the antenna, right? It all has to stay compact. And so that's what suffers is the antenna in one of these is much smaller than a dedicated device, right? So high gain antennas are much, much better and they can capture better signal. So when you add that to the multiple SIM cards and the reliability of a bigger device, dedicated device, all these little steps add up to a more solid internet connection, which is a better service that we're providing our clients. I don't know if you already knew this, but there are over 2 billion miles of fiber optic cable on the ocean floor. And this is what currently connects everybody together for the internet. And so this is a whole separate topic, but there could be some cyber warfare just by certain companies trying to cut the fiber lines to different regions of the world. Thankfully, that hasn't happened too much yet, but there have been some reports of sharks attacking these cables and eating them. So tangent over, let's keep talking about bonded internet. Another super interesting thing is what Starlink's doing. And this is the first real true satellite internet service. Many companies have tried to launch and do something like this in the past, but it just wasn't feasible. And so Starlink, which is a part of SpaceX, has finally developed a rocket system that can launch multiple satellites into space and have reusable rockets so Starlink is shipping between like 60 and 300 satellites a month. And they're building out the satellite network to connect the world via satellite. So I'm super interested in this technology to see if we can leverage this with live streaming. Now, one of the things that I learned when you have cable or fiber internet versus LTE internet, right? Your cell phone, each one of these connections has its own latency and ways of transferring the data. So when you mix and match all these together, from my understanding, it will increase your latency having three different sources. So just keep that in mind. I don't know exactly how this will play into the bonded internet setup here. If you try to have different sources, I'm assuming that the lowest latency is the one that prevails, unfortunately. So that means that we're gonna have more latency introduced to bonding, but it is a trade-off when you need that reliability of a bonded internet connection. Now, one of the things I didn't quite get an answer to yet is RTMP versus internet bonding. I'm assuming or guessing that RTMP would be less latency compared to internet bonding, because from what I understand, internet bonding breaks up the signal and then sends it out and then builds it back all together on the other end. So I'm curious if that decoding and encoding for internet connection versus an RTMP encode and decode, what that would look like. I don't really know that technical answer. Maybe somebody does, so please leave a comment below. And once again, Zoom does not take RTMP directly. So if you need to use Zoom for your clients or your application, 
you'll have to use internet bonding over an RTMP encoder. So hopefully this has introduced you to a few different options. I tried to simplify this as much as I could and not over explain or over complicate things, but there is a lot of knowledge on this topic and a lot of things that you can learn about. I'm gonna be covering this eventually in my streaming basics series, which we're in the middle of right now. It's starting to be busy for me, so I haven't been able to shoot those regularly like I did before, but hopefully I'll be back on it. The next few topics that I'm gonna cover in the stream basics series are cameras, teleprompters, graphics, and video switchers. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.